Hello and welcome to our EBEX webinar on Excel macros. My name is Ming Chi and I will be introducing my colleague Will Lavery who is an application consultant here at EBEX. Today's topic, Excel macros, is an extremely useful topic for users that have many repetitive tasks in their workplace and are looking to make to utilize Microsoft Excel to make their tasks easier, more efficient, and faster. It's a great topic, so Will, let's get started. My name is Will Lavery. Um, I'm an application consultant with eBex North America. Um, I spend most of my time uh, between technical and functional roles uh, supporting Microsoft Dynamics AX. Uh, I've also spent a lot of time uh, in Excel um, and a little bit of time uh, doing different development work. Um, so, started off with Visual Basic uh, and the language for macros is going to be Visual Basic for Applications. Um, EBEX is a totally invested in the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, we offer ERP, CRM, and BI. And we'll host that uh, also uh, in the Azure cloud. Uh, we won Microsoft's reseller of the year uh, several years, which we're proud of. And we're very proud that we've won uh, Global Partner of the Year as well. All right. Before I go ahead and get started, um, I'd like to let everybody in the audience know uh, we have you on mute right now, but there is a questions pane uh, within your GoToWebinar. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, type them in uh, so that I will see them. Uh, if the webinar is going too slow or if we're covering things too quickly, uh, please let me know. Uh, if you would like to see uh, us take a, a slightly different path, or if you have some very specific uh, questions as it comes to macros, just let me know. So we're going to bounce forth uh, between PowerPoint and Excel. And the reason we're going to do that is we're really going to try today to explain the basics of object-oriented programming. Um, you can go ahead and forget that word, don't need to know it, but that's what these macros, uh, the type of programming language that they'll be using. And we will be working with variables uh, when we're writing our macros. Um, and I'm going to use algebra, which I know is everyone's favorite subject, uh, to sort of help lay the foundation uh, for these macros. So. The first half of this webinar, we're going to focus very much on the foundations of Excel macros. So if you've been using macros for a while and you're looking for some more advanced tips, um, you know, pop, pop in a, a question or a comment and we'll try to get to some of those at the end of the, the webinar. All right, so these variables, um, very similar to algebra, um, you have your simple function x plus y equals z, and we'll look at recreating that with a macro. Uh, the, the big difference uh, with macros is that your variables can be different variable types. So when you have x plus y equals z, you're adding up three different numbers. And we're going to have two different variable types that are numbers that we're going to work with today. Integers and doubles. So integers are going to be your whole numbers, your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, these are very useful with Excel macros, mostly for rows and columns. So row 1, row 2, row 3. Um, and your doubles can be used for all of your other, your math. So your, um, any postings that include dollars and cents or negative numbers, things like that. And that's really one where you want to use doubles. So those are your first two uh, variable types. And if you have your simple x plus y equals z, uh, you can add up two integers and have a third integer. Or you could add up two doubles and have a third double. The next we're going to talk about is strings. 
Um, if you've used Excel extensively, um, you kind of understand this concept probably, um, but you've never necessarily declared um, an Excel, uh, a cell as a string. So a string is simply just text. So it's a string of text. This can be a phrase, a word. It can actually be a number uh, that you format as a string so that Excel no longer sees it as a number, but instead sees it as a word. Uh, the last, which I don't think we're really going to spend much time covering today, is date. Um, and that's simply what it seems like it is, and that is a date. So with those four variable types, you can really do just about um, any Excel macro that you want to do. So you've got whole numbers and the numbers of decimals, you've got words and you've got dates. So that's going to cover, you know, any of your calculations dealing with you know, dollars and cents, um, iterating over rows and columns, using words, um, and you know, showing grouping postings by dates, different things like that. So with these variables, um, what we're going to do essentially in the macro is either read a value and assign that to the variable or use some type of logic and then assign a value to that variable. Um, the first is our mathematical functions. Um, so your addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, and you can use more advanced uh, you know, trigonomic type functions uh, within your macro, but we're not going to cover that today either. And then the next thing, this is really where we start sort of stepping into to more programming. Um, there is an if function in Excel. Um, so if you've used that function, uh, that's, that's very much your first step here. And it's going to be simply an if-then statement. So if criteria A is true, return some value related to criteria A. Um, if not, or else, as we're going to see, else return some criteria possibly related to criteria B. So that if-then statement. Um, we're going to write some of those today. And like I said, that's really going to be our first, one of our first foundational um, concepts that we need to cover. And the third really key area um, we're going to cover is being able to iterate over data. Um, what I mean by that is simply reading a whole bunch of rows or columns one by one. So if I've got values in cell A1 through A10, by iterate over data, I mean read value A1, A2, A3, etc. We're going to look at two different ways to do that. The first is called a do until loop. With this do until loop, this is nice because what we're going to do is do something until a criteria is met. So the example I was just sort of talking about was do until column A on the row that we're in is empty, right? So if I have data in columns or in rows 1 through 10 in column A, I'm going to do until one of those values is empty, which would be A11, and then I'm going to stop. The other way we can do it is to sort of explicitly program in uh, the numbers. And that we're going to use a for loop to. And so we can see that we're going to do for and row or x, whatever your variable is, 1 to 10. In the example I just gave you, it may not work out because you may want to add more information. So that do until loop is going to always go until the value is empty, but your for loop um, you need to explicitly program where you want to start and where you want to stop. So they're very similar. You can usually accomplish the same functionality with both of them. Uh, 
but they're each sort of a little bit better at doing specific things. So just to sort of reiterate, um, first, ask questions if you have them, if it's going too slow or too fast. But we're going to look at variables. We're going to have these variables be different types. We're going to apply logic, whether it be an if-then statement or some mathematical functions. And we're also going to look at iterating over um, our data in Excel. So those are the three main functions we're going to cover today, or concepts we're going to cover. And with those, you really are going to get a baseline um, for any uses where you can object or any programming language. Whether that be, you know, a macro for BBA, um, or if you want to get into X++, plus plus, these, are, these are really the foundational uh, concepts that are the same throughout both of those. All right. So I started to say we're going to use algebra. And here we've got a very simple x plus y equals z. And in plain text, what I mean in just sort of everyday English, what are we saying? We're saying that x is a number, and that y is a number, and that z is also a number. And what we're going to do is say that x is equal to the value in cell A1, y is equal to the value in A2, that z is going to equal x plus y, and then we're going to have the value in A3 equals z. So if we pop over to Excel real quick, if we were to type in a value in B, a value for y, and then we would want to sum up B1 plus B2. So we can probably all do that in Excel relatively easily. Uh, we can all do that in our heads relatively easily. Um, and we can also say it. You know, we can, we can say what's happening relatively easy. So what I'm going to do is go to my Developer tab. Uh, this is hidden by default uh, within Excel. And this is where you're going to get to your macros. Uh, they move it every so often, every couple of years, every update. They hide or change um, where you go to enable your developer tab. So I usually end up just Googling, you know, how do I turn it on now? Uh, I believe it's customized ribbon now uh, in your Excel options. And you'll see that there's a, a developer tab that's going to be deselected by default. So one of the first things you're going to want to do when you start writing your own macros is to enable that developer tab. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the macro we've uh, I've started working on to do this. I don't like to spend all my time typing uh, during a webinar. It doesn't really benefit anybody seeing me make a bunch of typos. All right, so I guess this is maybe your first introduction to the uh, VBA uh, workspace within Excel. Right now, we're just going to write everything as a single, single long macro. A um, couple things to point out. This little uh, apostrophe. This can be used to write what's called comments. So anything I write here, uh, the system is going to ignore. So you can see it's green. That's where you can just sort of, you can write in comments about what's going on. All right, so what are the first things we have to do? We've got to create variables. So in this example, we're going to use three different variables, and they're all going to be doubles. Remember, doubles are our numbers that allow for decimal places. 
And we're also going to, the first thing we're going to do is assign a value to that double or to that variable. And so we're going to say x is going to be equal to the range. So what's my cell range? In this case, it's B1 and the value of that cell. So where the um, parentheses and periods and different things go, the syntax of the language, we're not going to spend too much time covering that today. Um, if you get an error, it's, it's usually just sort of, uh, you know, try to Google the syntax for VBA. Um, most languages are slightly different, but these core concepts are going to be the same. So if we can get the core concepts of what we're doing today, then the exact syntax um, you can work on, and it sort of just comes with experience. So the more you do it, the more you get used to the syntax and where everything goes. All right. But well, we could read this, most likely, and understand what we're doing. So x, our double, is going to equal b1's value. So the value out of b1, which is 4. And then y is going to equal the value out of b2. And then we're going to say that z equals x plus y. So we may notice uh, things are a little different. Um, some, of, some of the formulas are going to look kind of backwards. But this is your variable, and this is what you're assigning its value to be to the right. So we are setting z equal to x plus y. And then the last step is in range b3's value, we are going to assign the value of z. So I can run this macro, with this play button here. And remember, it's only going to read this code that's not been uh, commented out with an apostrophe. And so we get a 6 here. And if we change these numbers, we can run it again, and it's going to update. Now this is... This is a very simple example. It can obviously be done much quicker and easier, easier uh, within Excel. But we've shown here uh, creating your variables. We're reading cell values. We're performing logic on that cell value. And we're, we're writing that uh, to another cell. All right. So if there's no questions about this, I am going to continue on to the next step. And this, uh, this presentation is really going to build on itself. So if, if you do have some questions, uh, if something's unclear, please go ahead and ask. Um, it, you will get uh, sort of, I'd say, it lost, kind of left behind um, if, if some of these uh, earlier concepts, you, you kind of miss out on them. All right, so we can go back to this document, and you know, we can look at we can look at our plain text, um, and then we can look at our VBA, which is just sort of showing the syntax, and it's almost one for one. Um, you know, x is a number, dim x is a double, which is short for dimension, but just kind of understand, know that that's how you create a variable within BBA. Okay. Let's go to our next example. All right. Um, so here we're going to use a simple if-then statement. Um, we're also going to throw in an else if. All right. So, very simple to say in plain text. Most people can understand this when you say it. You, my budget is $10. I spent $12. If I spent more than my budget, I'm over budget. If I spend the same amount, just don't spend any more money. And if I spent less, I'm under budget. 
So, um, you know, very simple concept to understand. And it is very basic. Uh, one of the you know, core concepts of programming are if then statement. So here's our syntax to the right. Let's go ahead and hop back into Excel and we will go over uh, creating this plain text using this logic within Excel. Okay, so I'm going to split the screen between my macro window. I'm going to comment out all of this so the system skips, ignores that. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to my next portion. We've got a portion created. And I'm going to uncomment that. Okay. And I've got So I think a lot of people have used the if uh, function within Excel. So if my mouse spent which be B2 is greater than B1, we can go over budget. And if it's false, we can say we're under budget. We go nine spent. So we're going to sort of recreate that uh, within BBA. We can, so we, it's 10, uh, it's going to show under budget. You could nest your if statements, but once you start using, um, you know, couple, couple nested if statements or if formulas within Excel, it can get kind of difficult to read. Um, whereas the, the macro is going to be much easier and allow for much more flexibility. So that being said, most of the examples we are going over today uh, can be done purely in Excel, um, much faster and better. All right. So let's look over here at the macro. Dim my budget has doubled. So we're creating a budget, I mean a, a variable called my budget, and that variable type is going to be double. So it's going to be a number that we can allow for decimal places. And the, your variable my budget is going to equal the value in cell B1. So we've got our variable here, and we assign the value. And then we've got a new another variable called amount spent. And that's going to be our variable in B2. And then we've got a new variable type we haven't worked with yet before. And this is a string. So this is just simply any text. And below that, so we've got our three variables declared. And we're going to start applying some logic. So we've got our if statement here. So if our amount spent, which is one of our variables, is greater than our other variable, my budget, then the status, so that third variable, is going to be assigned the value over budget. And notice it's important to put over budget within quotation marks because that's saying that's the text over budget, whereas status is not in quotation marks, so that's our variable. Else if. So here's where we can add in more criteria. The amount spent equals my budget. Then the status is don't spend anymore. And the way these if functions work is it's going to keep going down until it finds a criteria that's true. And then do whatever logic is in that criteria and then end. So if the amount spent equals the budget, then my status is don't spend anymore. And if neither of those are true, so just sort of the global default, which is optional, um, then your status is under budget. Because if it's not more than and it's not equal to, then logically it's less than. And so the would be under budget. And then after that, what we're going to do is we've got our value and cell B3 is going to be equal to this string uh, status. So our string variable status 
whatever we assigned it, uh, it's we're going to write to that value. So we can see that we just click run, and now it's don't spend anymore uh, because we have a status. I mean, because the amount spent equals the budget. If we spent more than the budget, we'd be over budget, and less than would be under budget. So we have gone over variables. We've gone over using math with variables, and we've gone over using if then statements with these variables. So we've really covered our first two core concepts, uh, our variables, sign those variables values, and then also um, our logical functions, our if thens, and our, our mathematical functions as well. So uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, like I said before, if you have any questions uh, about this, we are going to build on this, so please let me know. Also, if this is going uh, far too slow for some people, um, if you're expecting uh, a little bit more uh, with you know, advanced functionality, let me know as well. All right, the next thing we're going to cover is iterating over data. And to do this, we are going to sum up a total amount spent. Um, this one is a little harder to sort of use plain text and sort of translate it to our VBA. But we're going to try. Add up the total spent until I run out of data. So we're going to do this until the value is empty. And then we're going to write that total value to a cell. Right. Let's hop back to our Excel document. And we will go ahead and comment this code out. And we will go next to our um, total amount spent. So this is where we're going to use our, our do until loop. All right. So just like before, the first thing we're going to do is declare a couple of variables. Uh, we've got our double which is our total spent. This is the first time I'm using an integer. Uh, like I said earlier, these are very common uh, in VBA for iterating over rows or columns. So uh, this one is called row. And I went ahead and assigned a value 2. Uh, the reason I did 2 is because if we look in the Excel document, that's really where our data starts. So we're going to start with row 2. All right. So let's kind of ignore this line for now. So we can just focus on the loop itself. Do until the range A row. So here it's 2. So do until A2's value equals nothing. So until it's empty. Then this is what I'm doing. So here is you know, doing whatever, doing stuff. And then if we look at the last step within here, my row is going to equal the row plus, plus 1. So I'm going to assign that value row to row equals 2 plus 1. Then I'm going to loop. 
So when I loop, I'll go back to the top, and now it's a three's value, and that until that equals not. Well, that's not empty. And then we're going to add another one. So it'll be four. I'll look at a four. That's not empty. All the way until I get to uh, row 12. Once this equals 12, I'm going to go up here. It's going to say a 12 value is empty. And I'm going to go down here below the loop. So that's the loop. We're going to do until A and whatever row we're on is empty. We're going to add one to the row every time. So we'll go to the next row, then the next row, then the next row until we get down here where it's empty. And we want to do some logic uh, within this loop. And that logic we're going to do is we're going to add up how much we spent. And so we've got our total spent double. And we're going to add whatever is in column B and row, whichever row we're on. So we're reusing this variable. We're not just, so whenever we're in here the first time, this row is going to equal 2. Then we're going to add 1 to it, come through again. It's going to equal 3. And so that way we can iterate. We can go over, do until, for every one of these rows, until we have an empty value in A. And then I'm going to end the loop. And once I've ended that loop, I'm going to set E2 here equal to the total spent. So if I look at the total spent, I added, so the previous value plus whatever was in uh, column B on the row that I was on. And so once I've ended that loop, then I can simply write that to cell E2 and add up all the values. So we can sort of check it down here that our, our sum is 88. And so that is really our, our first loop, being able to iterate over data. With these few concepts that we've gone over so far, you could probably do um, just about any macro uh, that you're trying to do. Um, we're going to go over a for loop. just because they can be used a little bit differently. Um, we can also look at nesting loops. Uh, we can nest an if-then uh, within these cells. So let's actually, let's do that first. Let's go ahead and nest. Um, I'll just total amount spent on day one. All right. And we'll say that this was day one also, and that this was day one. So there's some, you know, you can use some sum ifs or some pivot tables or things like that to get this data a little bit quicker. But every once in a while, every eventually you kind of run out of Excel functions or you just get a document that's not quite formatted perfectly. And so you've got options of reformatting someone's document or uh, looking at using macros to help you do that. So my total spent, I'm really only looking at total spent on day one. So let's go ahead and change this name. Day one. Okay. So if I were to run this right now, this is just going to simply add up everything and write it to E2. But if we think back to sort of how are we going to say this in plain text, add the value if the value in A equals 1. So if her value in range A and row so if this value equals 1, then we're going to add the 
this up. We're going to keep doing our loops. And remember, we need this row to be outside of the if statement because we want to always add one. We always want to go to the next row. But if the corresponding value in A is equal to 1, so we've got 7 plus 13, 20 plus 12, 32, uh, we're going to add those values together. And then we're going to put write the value to E2. So there's, there's not really a limit of what you can do with inside a loop or with inside an if statement. Um, we can put a do loop inside an if statement, vice versa. Um, so really, um, these core concepts, uh, we're not going to necessarily add to them. Uh, we're just going to use them in more and more uh, complex ways. Um, it's going to be more and more complex understanding what it's doing and different things like that. So these are really the core concepts of creating a macro. Right, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And we can look at doing the same thing, but with a for loop. It's, it's the same, but it's also different. So we're going to go for x equals 2 to 11. Next, x. So that is really um, that's the outside of our loop, really. Uh, we don't do the row equals row plus one because we're telling it to go to the next one. Um, this for loop essentially has an implied plus one with it. Uh, you would able, you can sort of step in different intervals, um, but it's not necessary if you're just going over a certain number of rows. So we can. Uh, just do dim total spent as double, and then our total spent equals our total spent plus range will be row dot value. Okay, and then after we've looped over all of our cells, we can set our range e2 dot Oops. Oh, um, it should have been x, because x is our variable here that, uh, it's going up and down, or is increasing by one. Okay. Um, so we can see it, it added up all those values. However, if we added the day 11, um, and we added a value of $15, the difference here is that this for loop is not going to pick up that 18, where is our do loop because the here is going until A is empty, it would actually pick up that $15. So it's kind of um, for loops have different use cases. Um, than do until loops, but you can usually accomplish the same amount of uh, or the same results with each of them. All right. So 
I'm going to go back to my Excel document and or PowerPoint and re go over sort of what we covered. Um, and then if you'd like, uh, we can look at um, sort of uh, different using different sheets, um, using name ranges uh, within macros, which is very nice functionality, and some more sort of nesting some of those together, a little more complex complex um, with more complex functionality. All right, so we declared uh, variables. Um, we looked at using integers, um, primarily for rows and columns, where you need your, your whole numbers. Uh, we looked at using doubles, where we're, we're having currencies and, and different things like that. Uh, any numbers that are going to have decimals. We looked at using strings, uh, which was our text. So we were able to spit back text that said we're either under or over budget. Uh, we also looked at using, uh, well, we didn't look at using dates, but that's it's important to know. Uh, we looked at adding up numbers. And then we also looked at adding up numbers with an if-then statement. So if the day is one, um, add the number. You know, if not, don't. We also looked at iterating over certain data. Showed a little bit of the end first. We never really showed how you create, how you start creating a macro. Um, and so before I go into the advanced functionality, um, I'll sort of show how you sort of start creating one yourself. Uh, it's usually the first step I take in creating a macro. Um, and by doing that, what I'm going to do is just open up a new workbook. So we've got a blank Excel document here. And we'll look at redoing our X and Y and Z. So assuming you've got your developer tab enabled, we're going to record a macro. You can create a macro from scratch, and if you're doing it quite frequently, it's probably a good idea um, to create it from scratch because you know what you're doing. But if it's been a while since you've done one, or it's the first time, recording a macro is really good because it's sort of um, gives you, it records what you did in the macro language. So I'm going to go ahead and record this macro. It's going to be called macro2. It's stored in this workbook. It's good enough. And I'm going to select cell B1. I'm going to type in 2. I'm going to select cell B2. I'm going to type in uh, 5. I'm going to select cell B3 and type in 7. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now. You can go ahead and edit macro two. So this is a great uh, starting point for macros. Um, if you're selecting between sheets, you need to know how to do that. Writing the cells. Um, maybe you want to make a cell a certain color. You can record a macro of you just sort of changing the text, the formatting, things like that. You don't actually have to know what it's doing, um, and it'll just sort of give you all that information. Uh, they're doing it um, slightly different than I did. Uh, mine was simplified. Uh, what they're doing here is selecting the cell. This isn't always necessary. In fact, it's going to slow down the macros. Um, you know, what I was doing was simply a range 
B1.value. Let me talk a little bit about that. So they're selecting a cell there. I'm simply assigning the value of that cell something. So they're selecting that cell, and then they're changing the formula of the active cell. Important thing to notice, I was doing value. By default, it does formula. So if you think about the output of a cell, is a value. So if you were to paste values, you would get essentially this. And if you were just to copy and paste normal, where it pastes the formula within the cell, that's what's right here. Um, one more really quick thing, which is very nice. Uh, you can use name ranges here. So if you do value X and you assign that to your name range here, that is going to function properly. This is important. This is important. Um, okay. This is important. Uh, when you move uh, cells around, uh, normally you're used to using a function. That function will update automatically if you just reference cell B1 and you move B1 around. So we can see it updated to test. And if I do the same thing in range, do it B2, so we'll show why. If I move these cells around, the one where it references a name range is going to function properly. Whereas the southern one's going to reference the original cell, so it doesn't notice that I'm moving them. All right. Um, so that, that leaves us about ten minutes for questions, uh, which is usually what I would I would like to leave. Uh, so, are there any uh, questions um, from anybody out there on creating macros? Um, anything, you know, just a concept. Uh, any very specific questions? You've got a document or a macro that you're working on that uh, something's not working correctly. Uh, you're, you know, so, so as generic or specific as you would like to make it. All right. Um, well, it doesn't look like anybody in the audience has any questions. Uh, if you do think of something, uh, you want to reach out to me directly, either for a copy of this presentation. Uh, I can be reached at wlabry at evex.com. So I uh, thank you all for your time attending today. <laughs>